Good morning. Let us study today perichloride water system. It is an interesting system, congruent melting system, congruent melting point system. You know, similar, this is similar to potassium iodide water system, eutectic system. That is eutectic system, this is congruent melting system. Okay. But if you look at the phase diagram, if you look at the phase diagram, this is potassium iodide water system. So similarly, um, they have similar features. They have both have similar features. So please study potassium iodide water system very well. If you understand potassium iodide, what are the components present, what are the phases present, then you will be able to study very easily perichloride water system. You will be able to understand and then study. Okay. Now, as I said, it is a very interesting system. Two component concurrent melting system. Two components, perichloride and water, combine to form four stable compounds. Perichloride, it is a two component system. Perichloride and water combines to form four compounds. Four uh, compounds, stable compounds, four stable compounds, four concurrent melting points. P, E, G, I. There are four concurrent melting points. At this P, E, G, I. Okay. Now, similar to two component system, reduced phase rule is applied here. Reduced phase rule is used to describe the phase diagram. You first draw the phase diagram. And then you can easily explain these points. Once you draw the phase diagram, you can explain this all the points. Now let us see the phase diagram, how it is obtained. For example, you just draw this is the potassium iodide water system, freezing mixture, potassium iodide water system. This is the tactic point, and here uh, ice, here potassium iodide will be there. So then you just draw like this. This small peak and then same equivalent peak and then this. Okay. This um, in the y axis, left hand side is 100%. 100%. We take 100% water. We take pure water. On adding perichloride, on adding perichloride, the composition increases. Okay. And at the right, 100% perichloride. Now, yeah, what is phase diagram? What is called a phase diagram? A constant pressure. A graph is plotted between temperature and composition of perichloride. The graph obtained is called phase diagram. The graph obtained is called a phase diagram of perichloride water system. This, this is the phase diagram for perichloride water system. How it is drawn? It is very simple. Let us take the water, let us take the water in a beaker, in a beaker or in a boiling tube. For example, 10 ml of water. Okay, and it is placed in the uh, boiling tube, it is placed in a beaker or ice box, ice, uh, ice cubes, ice cubes, to cool the water to 0 degree Celsius. This is the freezing point of water. 0 degree Celsius is the freezing point of water. The boiling tube or the beaker is fitted with the stirrer. stirrer. This is stirrer and the thermometer to measure the temperature, to measure the freezing point. Temperature that is freezing point. Okay. Now the freezing point of water, pure water is 0 degrees Celsius. Okay. Let us now add, let us now add perichloride to it. Let us now add 0 0.1 gram perichloride to it and measure the freezing point. So the freezing point decreases on further addition of perichloride. Therefore, this AB curve is called Depression of freezing point curve. AB is called a freezing curve. Okay. AB is called a freezing curve. Now, on adding perichloride, the freezing point decreases. Freezing point decreases. And the point B is called a eutectic point. The point B is called a eutectic point. Uh, that is minus 55 degrees Celsius. Is the lowest temperature, the lowest temperature that is obtained by the addition of perichloride to ice or water at 0 degrees Celsius. So, 
So this is the mixture thus obtained, eutectic mixture. What is eutectic mixture? At, at this point, at eutectic point, ice and uh, solid, this compound is formed. This uh, stable compound is formed between ferric chloride and dodecahydrate and uh, water. Okay, therefore, below, below the eutectic temperature, there are eutectic mixture, ice and uh, this compound. Ice and uh, this compound. That is, you are studying this. Ice here, potassium iodide, therefore ice plus potassium iodide. Okay, above this curve, for example, above this curve, it is in the solution state. Above, the, above this curve, A, K, it is in the solution, only solutions are present. Okay. Now, let us say, uh, as I said, they form four stable compounds, confluent melting point at C, E, G at the maximum, confluent melting point. Okay. Now, you see, this is a simple eutectic system. This is a simple eutectic system. This is again simple eutectic system. This is, therefore, there are five simple eutectic systems. How many? The phase diagram of ferric chloride water consists of five eutectic systems and five eutectic points. Five eutectic points. V, D, F, S, J are all of eutectic points. So, as I said, AB is the freezing curve. Along the curve, along the curve, solution, liquid is in equilibrium with ice. We have already studied. Okay, so it is um, univariant. Along the curve, it is univariant. BCV, this is the solubility curve. This curve, similar to potassium iodide water, BCV is called the solubility curve. Okay, now, Freezing mixture, this mixture, the eutectic mixture, the eutectic mixture is called a freezing mixture because the temperature, the lowest temperature is attained. Lowest temperature is attained. Further addition of beyond point C, beyond point C, further beyond point C, you write this beyond B, further pericloric addition, further we are adding pericloric. Okay. Further addition of ferric chloride and the heating, heating, solubility curve, you can heating, num uh, number of phases becomes 2 because on heating, ice becomes solution, ice becomes uh, liquid, ice becomes liquid, therefore, there are 2 phases, one is C, this is a solid component, this component, and the plus solution, dissolving it, okay, in water, that is water. Now, next point, the maximum point, see the maximum point C, how many maximum points are there? C, D, the maximum points corresponds to the stable compound formation and are called the concurrent melting points. And according to the, the maximum point C is the concurrent melting point of concurrent melting point of this compound, concurrent melting point of this. At this point, remember, at this point, Solid and liquid phases are there. Solid, solid and liquid phases are present. At this point, there are only two phases. And have the same composition. They have the, that is why it is called a congruent, congruent system. But why it is called congruent system? Congruent means similar, same composition. Both in the solution phase and the solid phase. So therefore, at this point, it becomes one component. Remember, this is very, very important. It is a two component system, but at point C, E, G, I, I, it becomes one component. It becomes one component because, because solid and the solid and the liquid phase, at this point, solid and liquid phase are the same composition, that is the concurrent, and have short melting point. They have short melting point, therefore. On applying, by applying the phase rule, F equal to C minus C plus 1, C number of component is 1, and the number of phase, solid and the liquid phase, solid phase and liquid phase, solid and the liquid phase, therefore 1 minus 2 plus C equal to 0, this is invariant point, similar to eutectic point, similar to eutectic point. This point is also invariant point, but at eutectic point, there are three phases, ice, similarly here, at this eutectic point, at this eutectic point, you have 
this solid component, this solid component, okay, this solid E, uh, C and E, and the solution also there. Therefore, there are three phases at the eutectic point. Here, at the eutectic point, there are three phases. But at the um, at confluent point, at confluent melting point, there are only two phases, solid phase, liquid phase, they have the same composition, okay, over, and it is it is said to consist of only one component. At point C, this is the only component present. At point C, heptahydrate is the only component present. At point G, pentahydrate is the only component present in the system. Okay, C B curve. Now let us discuss C B curve. This direction, we are going C B curve, not B C curve. C B curve. C B curve means increase, you are adding water this side. You are adding water this side. If you go this side, you are adding water. If you are going this side, you are adding perichlorine. Okay. So C B curve. C B curve gives the effect of addition of water. Okay, effect of addition of water in the lowering of confluent melting point. So on adding water, you are at point C. At point C, when you add water to the system, when you add, you add water to the system, the confluent melting point decreases. Similarly, C B curve. C B curve gives the effect of addition of perichlorine. This side, you are adding perichlorine. Effect of addition of perichlorine in the lower end of confluent melting point. The confluent melting point. At point D, for example, at point D, this E appears, E separates out. Therefore, E and C is solid. E, okay, at point D, do well. At point, similarly, at point F, pentahydrate crystallizes out. Separates out or crystallizes out. Okay, at point, now at point K, at point K, only anhydrous perichlorate, 100%. At point K, since the temperature is very high, all the water molecules are lost. At point K, all the water molecules are lost. It is anhydrous form. Perichlorate is in the anhydrous form. Similarly, at point J, at eutectic point J, what are the percent? This compound and this compound are adding solution. Okay. And below this eutectic picture is this compound and anhydrous perichlorate. Okay. So it is very, very important. Uh, please study well. Thank you for watching.